to the Abundant Practice Podcast. <laughs> Welcome back to the Abundant Practice Podcast. I'm your host, Allison Pereira. I'm really excited to be here with Stephanie Feld talking about intensives. She runs the Intensive Design Lab, and she's going to talk to us today about how to offer intensives, what that looks like, what that can do for your practice. I'm really excited about it. So thanks for being here. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. This is so exciting. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe first, could we do a little origin story? Like what got you interested in intensives? Yeah. The funny thing is, so I heard about intensives probably more than 10 years ago from a friend who's also a therapist. And at the time I thought that cannot be real. Like there's no way that a client travels to a therapist, like in a like lovely uh, location and does intensive therapy for a week. I was like, that can't be ethical, you know? <laughs> and fast forward till now, my practice is exclusively intensives and I support therapists to offer them in their practice as well. So very kind of like an ironic thing, but I think a lot of people have that experience where they're like, that can't be a thing. Or mm -hmm. what even is that? You know, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. Intuitively you could imagine what it is, but that's the question I get the most is like, but what is it really? Right. And I, I mean, I think about two therapists as, you know, obviously I love therapists and you love therapists, but as a group, we can be very judgy if something is outside of the box of what we have seen therapy as. Yeah. We can get real, like we'll slap an unethical tag on that real quick instead of exploring and actually looking at our code of ethics. <laughs> which yeah. actually isn't excluding this at all. No, so, yeah. yeah. And in fact, I think in some ways it can be more ethical if it's serving the client's needs um, and like giving them more autonomy and like self-determination over the way that they want to receive services. So, or, or like their therapy. So that's mm -hmm. kind of been cool to explore. Yeah, yeah. And to be able to like get relief in, a sh in like a finite period of time yes. that otherwise with like outpatient one-on-one -on -one, once a week, once every other week could have taken a significantly longer period of time. Absolutely. Like it really is a gift to be able to offer it yeah. and a gift for the clients who choose it. So 100%. awesome. Now you say a week at a time and, and I hear of intensives often as like maybe two, maybe over the course of two days or maybe mm. one very long session in one day. So I know intensives can look a lot of different ways. Can you talk us through that? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the most fun part is that you can be really creative and you can make it really custom to your clients and to your life. You know, mm -hmm. all of us have a lot of different things going on. Maybe you have kids at home, caring for a parent or grandparent, or, you know, like there's all kinds of things that can change the way we need to practice. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a ton of options. So some people do a long day, like you're saying, like six hours, you know, three hours in the morning, three in the afternoon with like an hour lunch break. Um, that can work really well for couples, mm -hmm. um, you know, cause then you're seeing them together and like one-on-one -on -one through the course of a day, which mm -hmm. I'm just like, Ooh, I don't even do couples work, but I'm like, right. that's amazing. Uh -huh. Um, and then you can do half days. So like for me, I'm a highly sensitive person. I'm neurodivergent. About three hours feels really great to me mm -hmm. and I practice EMDR. So, you know, there's really, when you're doing that, like deep trauma work about mm -hmm. three hours feels pretty good. Um, and I tend to meet with people three days in a row. So mm -hmm. they're still kind of in that like therapy experience. You're not going back to your life and like putting on your mom hat or like you're going yes. back to work and getting all that stress. Mm -hmm. um, are still like very much in the experience and um, you just get to go so much deeper. So yeah. that's one benefit. Um, mm -hmm. Well, I'm curious about something you said for your people who are local who do it. Are you still recommending like stay at a hotel? Don't go back to real life. Like just stay in the soup. If they can, mm -hmm. I think that's really beneficial mm -hmm. and it allows you to get so much more out of it. You know, that's not like everyone's situation, but, um, especially, I mean, like, you know, many of us are moms or like women, women therapists, just being able to stay in a hotel and not be woken up at night. 
Why I not? felt like, as you said, like staying in a hotel, I'm like alone. Amazing. Seriously? Yeah. I do it like, for my business masterminds that I'm a part of, but like, otherwise there's, there's none of that in my life. No, like you don't have to feed anyone dinner. Mm -hmm. You don't have to like take anybody to soccer practice. It's just your time. Mm -hmm. And that can be really appealing for yeah. a lot of reasons. Absolutely. Especially if you're like going through the hard stuff instead of like shutting it down so that you can be on mom mode or partner mode or whatever. Yes. Yes. You can just like stay with it as much as you can tolerate. Mm -hmm. Um, because that's part of what you're paying for is the space to tolerate. Yes. And start to really make some headway, even even in the evenings, like when they're not in front of you. Exactly. And how many clients do we have who like we it's so hard to slide into that really deep place mm -hmm. because you know in an hour I'm walking out that door and then mm -hmm. I have to handle on my own whatever comes up. And exactly. so some people like, you know, we, we stay on the surface trying to stay safe, but when people do intensives, a lot of the time they're like, look, I know this is the time I need to do it. I'm ready to go all in. And there's like more freedom and permission to go to those really deep places. Um, and oh man, it's such like, it's, it's like a high, I think, for therapists to be uh -huh. like, that's the type of work we want to do all the time. Yeah. And the format like really allows for that. So I love it. It's, yeah. it's really amazing. I'm, so things coming up for me that I'm guessing comes up among your students too, is like, I have this fear of like, if I were to do a, like a week long intensive with someone, what if we run out of things? Right. Like, what do I do? <laughs> People always say that, which is so funny because- there's always more, right? Like mm -hmm. humans are so complex. Yeah. And usually, usually it's like the right amount of time. Mm -hmm. But even if it's not, then you just say, okay, what do we want to spend this time for? You know, because it is highly focused. There is definitely like a goal for that time. And that's what we're focusing on. Mm -hmm. But then there's so much freedom for consent and changing lanes. Because, you know, when you start to do deep work with people, things come up that you did not expect or you had yeah. no clue was related. And so mm -hmm. you have the freedom to go down that, you know, trail and then like bring it back to the to the main focus. Mm -hmm. So at usually when people do intensives, they say that at first. And then when they've done it, they're like, oh, I think I need more time. So uh -huh. people actually come back for like multiple intensives Amazing. because clients really like that experience too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's very efficient. And yes. as somebody who values efficiency, I can very much appreciate it. Yes. Like efficient for us and for the clients. And I'm yeah. all about like alleviating suffering as much as we can. Mm -hmm. And if someone can like feel better and not suffer for a year that it would take us to do work, you know, mm -hmm. week by week and it can happen sooner. Oh my gosh, by all means, right. let's do that. And then like, go live your life, you know, <laughs> like yeah. get, get back to the good stuff. Um, Cause sometimes it feels like it, it can feel like a snail's a snail's pace. It can. Yeah. Yeah. I'm guessing for people who go from intensives back to one-on-one, -on -one, it probably feels frustrating in some ways. Yeah. Um, or maybe yeah. it opens up some things for those like outpatient one-on-ones that um, like the intensive unlocks something that helps that move faster. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. Like I do a lot of adjunctive work. Mm -hmm. And so people will have like a primary therapist that they see week by week, mm -hmm. but maybe they get stuck or it just a different topic comes up and it's outside the scope of their primary therapist. So they'll come do like an intensive and it does, it like opens up this whole new realm that they then can go back to their primary therapist and like continue on in the work they've been doing. So it's really <laughs> fun to collaborate and partner with other therapists that way too. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. So you're helping other therapists provide intensives. Are there mm -hmm. certain modalities that lend more towards intensives or modalities that lend away from intensives? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything people need to be considering? It's such a good question. And there are definitely modalities that practice intensives more. So, you know, I said I'm trained in EMDR. There's such a wealth of information about how to offer intensives from that perspective. Mm -hmm. And then as I was like thinking of other people, I'm thinking this 
like any modality could be used in an intensive model. Mm -hmm. Um, Like there are so many different ways to do it that I think there's like so much possibility. So like I said, couples work. Oh my gosh. Like whoever gets to the end of a couple session and they're like, we were, we, we ran out of time. You know what I mean? Like Uh you need more and maybe you get into a topic with the couples and then you're sending them back under the same roof and thinking like, I don't know how that's going to go. Um, so it's nice to like have that space with couples work. Another one is like, um, CBT and like ERP. So like fears, Mm -hmm. phobias, OCD, like exposure therapy can be really cool to do, um, intensives around. There's some research around like pediatric OCD and intensives. Um, yeah, so cool. Okay. And then you can like include a family session in there or like work with the parent. Like, you know, as someone who started out doing play therapy, you work with a child, but of course the whole family system is like really important when it comes to what this child's going through. So another intensive that's really common is like family intensives. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's, you know, more people, you kind of need more time to like really make progress. Mm -hmm. So the answer is yes and no. I think there's some that, that have more, um, like longevity when it comes to offering intensives like EMDR, brain spotting, ART, like all Mm -hmm. those like trauma focused Mm -hmm. um, modalities. But I'm really about like not gatekeeping and saying, if you offer a valuable experience in 50 or 53 minutes, you can definitely do that in three hours and see how it feels for you and see how it feels for your clients. The therapists I work with are like, I can't, I can't go back. Like I can't unknow what I know now, you know? Mm -hmm. It's so wild. Yeah. Yeah. When I just think about like the flow of business is so different just from a business model perspective, Mm -hmm. um, there's a freedom to it because you're not like on the hook for every week. I was just talking to somebody who's, whose partner travels every other week. And so every other week is incredibly hard when all of the home stuff is on her and work. Uh, and so we were like brainstorming some different ways to like make that, make the disparate week to week patient numbers make sense. Yeah. Like how to make that happen. And this would be a great way that I'm going to turn her on to. Um, yes. That's literally my schedule. Like I yeah. do every other week intensives. And part of that was also like living with chronic illness, you know, like mm-hmm. I was noticing is really hard. Some weeks I would have a lot of energy other weeks I wouldn't. And I was mm-hmm. like, what do you do with that in your practice to try to make sure that it supports, you know, you and your health. So that's yeah. been neat to kind of explore that option. Yeah. 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 So wild. So I'm thinking there are like, you know, a million different structures, right? So you could do three hours, you could do a full week, you could do, you know, a- any amount of hours per day, depending on what your stamina is and what what's best for the client. Mm-hmm. How do you help your students figure out what's best for them and their client? Like, how do you walk I them know. through that? I know. We usually just talk about all the options. Mm -hmm. And I mean, sometimes intuitively, you just know this is what's going to work for me, or this is what, you know, fits with my client's life logistically. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times we don't know until we try it. Um, And so I just tell people, you know, as much as your schedule can tolerate to try different formats and see what feels good to you. Mm -hmm. Um, In the beginning, I tried all kinds of weird you know, experimented with different configurations of intensives. And then when you land on something that works really well for you, it's like finding that shoe or like that bathing suit that you're like, oh yeah, like this is it, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. (laughs) And then you can kind of like build from there. But I think there's definitely sort of like a soul searching and experimentation phase in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Which when you're coming from a very structured meet with clients once a week into the unknown, into the unknown, Um, there's and when it's your this, livelihood, you know, like yeah. financially that can be really scary it can to be. experiment. 
Yeah. But it sounds like, I mean, it's something that you could shift to over time. Like you could be with uh, still a lot of one-on-one clients and still incorporate this into your practice as you make the transition, if you wanted to, to full intensives. Right. Right. You could. A lot of people do hybrids. So they have some clients who meet weekly or every other week, and then some intensive weeks. Some people, you know, use it as a way to, to have additional income. Like if they um, if they do see clients, uh, they, they are contracted with insurance. They may have like private pay intensives to supplement. So there's, again, I know that can be scary to think, oh my gosh, there's so many possibilities. How do I figure out what's good for me? But Mm -hmm. on the flip side of that, there's so many possibilities. So one of these is bound to, you know, be really supportive for you. No cookie cutter approach. Right. Right. Are there any like red flags that wouldn't be like immediately obvious to Mm -hmm. those of us who were new to this idea um, in terms of assessing whether a client is appropriate for an intensive? Yeah, I think it's very specific to each therapist and the work you do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you do DBT, then your clients are probably going to have some of the things that I would consider a risk factor that I wouldn't work with in my work. Mm -hmm. So it really depends just what you offer. Right. Um, Right. Because if you've been doing DBT, you can probably roll with that stuff in a way that I might be less comfortable with. Yes. Like if I think it depends on the goal of the intensive, because you could have an intensive that's just about stabilization Mm -hmm. and it could be a step down from inpatient Mm -hmm. or IOP, you know, Mm -hmm. like that's filling a need that doesn't really exist formally. So Mm -hmm. That's a possibility. Other people may say, you know, for me, I'm like, okay, I'm I'm doing EMDR. I would love for people to be able to stay in their window of tolerance, you know, as much Mm -hmm. as possible for that period of time. Um, Typically, I say no suicide attempts within like the last six months. That's so arbitrary because stability isn't measured by that, but that's just like a rule of thumb. Um, I don't work with eating disorders, that's not my specialty. So if that's what's going on, I make sure they have a primary therapist or a physician who's monitoring that while we're working together. So Mm -hmm. I've kind of come up with my own screening um, tools and the students who are in the design lab, they get kind of like a template of possible screening or like eligibility criteria. Mm -hmm. And then they can decide based on the type of intensive they want to offer what's going to be, you know, the screening or eligibility candidacy um, that fits for them. Yeah. Amazing. Mm -hmm. And how do you help people price these? Because I know like there's the like one-on-one model where we have our fee and we know what it is. Um, Do you just do that same fee by hour of how often you're like, how many times, how many hours you're working with them? How are you helping people figure that out? Well, there's a couple different options. One, and when I started, I just charged my hourly rate for as many hours as I was doing. You know, I started with current clients. And so that just felt like an easy segue to kind of get my feet wet. Mm -hmm. Um, And a lot of people do that. They'll start with current clients that they already know, that they feel comfortable with, and kind of like dive in that way. But once you've been doing it for a while, or maybe up front, you're like, I know this is powerful. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you the amount of like transformation and results that clients see is, it is shocking. So Mm -hmm. that really gave me confidence to charge these premium private pay fees that I had seen people charging in Mm -hmm. Facebook groups or wherever. And I'm thinking like, wow, that's amazing. But I don't know. I don't know if I could, but once I had so many clients, like literally leaving saying it's so cheesy, but they're like, I'm, my life has changed. And I'm thinking, this is not, this is not standard therapy. Mm -hmm. This is something else. This is a life-changing experience. And it, it really gave me that confidence to charge the premium rates. Mm -hmm. So we're talking like 300 plus an hour. Mm -hmm. Um, and You can charge it hourly. Like some people that feels good to them. I have a package and that's what I teach students. So we have like a pre-intensive session that essentially is like an intake. Mm -hmm. Um, There's a client workbook that this is part of that like premium experience. It's like this lovely like 
magazine kind of thing off of Canva that just like welcomes them into the experience. It helps them like orient to what to expect. There's mm -hmm. a ton of preparation activities and assessments. So it really is, it does feel very different. Although what we're doing clinically is very similar to what we would do in a weekly session, mm -hmm. it creates this like container that is really powerful. So there's the workbook. Um, then I have the intensive sessions and a follow-up session. Mm -hmm. So after two to four weeks, I want to see people again and see, okay, where are you at? Mm -hmm. You know, is what you experienced in the intensive still like, are you still seeing those same results? Is anything triggering you? Um, and then we talk about next steps, you know, like what their journey looks like moving forward. Awesome. So all that is a part of the intensive package and um, people pay a 50% deposit at the time that they book. Mm -hmm. And then they get that their client workbook, they do it all. And then we meet for the intake and the um, remaining 50% they pay on the day one of the intensive. Amazing. I love that structure yes. um, because it feels very clear for the client, clear for the therapist. Um, yeah. And I, I always love when something is priced according to outcome instead of hour. hundred percent. It just makes more sense. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's not as easy for everyone to wrap their mind around when they're thinking in that button chair model, but it's still, it's effective. And like, marketing. How do you market this in a way that keeps, keeps this your entire practice? Yes. So it really is. I like everything else, you know, private pay. It really is about niche and about mm -hmm. what are the folks coming in? Like, what are their pain points and where do they want to be on the other side of the intensive and being really, really specific about that. Yes. Um, and a lot of people don't know. I mean, a lot of therapists don't know what an intensive is. So clients definitely don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but when we can share the benefits of it, like you don't have to have a weekly session if you don't want to, you know, if you travel or you have a busy family schedule, whatever it is, like you have the option to do an intensive format of therapy. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of my students, that's the very first thing they do is they just change their autoresponder to new inquiries mm -hmm. and just say this, I offer weekly and intensives and it shares what it is. You would be shocked how many people without much marketing or messaging at all, just opt for the intensive option because Amazing. that's just what they prefer. Yeah. 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 And telling other therapists. So the majority of my referrals at this point are from other therapists who are mm -hmm. working with someone and they think, okay, even if we do the same exact work, the same modalities, this client would benefit from the intensive format. Mm -hmm. So, you know, of course, in the beginning, like anything else, we're just trying to like connect with people, build awareness around this like topic and this option of therapy. Mm -hmm. But, um, I mean, people get really excited about it. Clients yeah. and other therapists. I mean, it is exciting. Really, Absolutely. it's a totally different way of doing things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My, my brain is going in a million different ways of like, I you know, know, have somebody in my group practice who would be amazing at intensives and just thinking like, wouldn't that be so great for her? I think she works, she loves teenagers. They're her favorite, but the um, erratic you know, summer started, yes. they're often in from well-to-do family. So they're in Japan for the month or, you know, like ways where it's not really feasible for them to be able to hop on a telehealth call. No, so not at it, all. And like, who wants to do that while you're in Japan? <laughs> and teenagers love them, honestly, because you can have these like really whatever, like deep talking moments, but then you can be doing an activity or you could be doing something somatic. You could like, there's so much possibility for integration, you know, yeah. having yoga, having art, music, because you have more time. So it's mm -hmm. like, you actually get to use more of the tools in your toolbox Yeah, and you can flow with whatever that client needs in that moment. Yeah. So it's just... Yeah. It's, it's like the therapist playground, honestly. Yeah. I love it. I mean, it's just so smart. It's yeah. okay. Um, how can people get in touch with you, Stephanie? Because I know, I know people listening 
are going to be feeling like I feel right now. Like, I want to know more. I, I know, this, I know. I want this to be available and I want to get it and know how to do it. Yes, yes. Well, I host the Facebook group, the Therapy Intensive Community. Uh-huh. And so that is like the perfect place. We have a lot of well, therapists from all different backgrounds and modalities gathering around this topic of intensives. There's a ton of like free content, trainings, resources. So that's the number one place. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my website is kaleidoscopecounselingstl.com. Okay. And um, if you're not a Facebook person, which I know a lot of people are not, mm-hmm. all that content is also available on YouTube. So awesome. we will not forget you. Yes. Very good. And so if people are like, okay, I'm sold, like I'm ready to hop in. Your website is the way to do that. Yep. Yep. Okay, cool. Awesome. Thank you so much. I think this is just so fun and interesting. And I love, I love outside the box. So yeah, I appreciate your time. Yeah.